You know, I think this is very important. I don't think a lot of people focus on this, but in Hebrew 12, 14, it says to pursue peace with all men and holiness, for without which no man shall see God. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Brother Jujin, and you are watching Brother Jujin Bible Station. It's my very first show, and we're discussing prophets and um, a little bit about failed prophecy. And today's guest on the show is not only a guest, but a friend, Brother Terrell Davis. I'm going to let him introduce himself to you. All right, then we get started. Thank you, Brother Juja. Happy to be here. Blessed to be here. I've studied God's Word for several years now, and I don't uh, carry a title or nothing like that. I know some, some people consider me somewhat of an apologist, but uh, I really don't get caught up into those things. I just try to speak, speak the Word of God. Uh, from scripture and share truth directly from the word of God. Cool, cool. Okay, thank you for that introduction. So today's discussion, what well, you want to talk about was prophets. So right, right. Um, have you had any experience with someone saying they're a prophet and it didn't come true? Oh like yeah. At church or anything? Oh yes. Um, many, many different times. Um, just, just growing up uh, in church, you see a lot of. Uh, People want to prophesy to you and, uh, you know, speak a word over your life mm -hmm. and things like that. And uh, sometimes they don't come to pass and then you feel like, uh, you know, what happened, God? You know, you said this, you know, yeah. the prophet told me this and that or whatever. It doesn't come to pass. And then you kind of feel like God let you down or disappointed and stuff like that. But when you go and you study scripture um, based off of what uh, the, the prophets of the Old Testament and the prophets of the New Testament, you see uh, the prophets of the Old Testament role was completely different than the prophets of the New Testament role today. And one of the reasons why I believe, or one of the reasons why I see uh, prophecies that are not coming to pass is because prophets today are trying to take on the role of Old Testament prophets, where prophets who go and you know speak before kings and nations and stuff like that. But their their roles are completely different from the Old and New Testament. Okay, well you know what? I want to show you and to, and to the audience. I'm showing you guys a video clip of a couple of pastors and I guess someone might be prophets. Right. Um, of them prophesying and predicting that Donald Trump would be president for a second term. So let's take a look, you guys. All right, here's the footage. I want to say without question, Trump is going to win the election. Uh, and uh, that doesn't mean you sit home and don't vote. That, that, that means you get out and do everything you can to work. But he's going to win. That's, I think, a given. Because I am speaking from the future. Yes, you are. this moment. Right this moment. And I am going to proclaim that yes. President Trump will be president of the United States. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Will it be an eight-year presidency? Absolutely. Absolutely, we will. Uh, you're sure about that? Wow, man, that was a trip. So, yeah. you know what? I, I mean, there's a scripture that, that's, that talks about um, giving a, a false prophecy, and I want to read Deuteronomy 18.22. Right. It's what a prophet proclaims mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord doesn't come true. The prophet has spoken presumptuously, so don't be alarmed. Mm -hmm. So speaking presumptuously is like speaking too soon, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, too fast, mm -hmm. and then be wrong. So that's, that's right. terrible, it's bad. Right. So the Bible tells us don't be alarmed. And that's exactly what those pastors done. Right. And, in, and even more, they right. spoke presumptuously. Right. So I wonder, I wonder now what's going to happen when they have to look at their congregation and go mm -hmm. back and tell them and explain to them, yeah. you know, that their, their prophecy was, it was a failed prophecy. It was yeah. incorrect. It was wrong. So, so what are your views on what you just saw? Yeah, so um, that's, um, see, that's, that's the, the problem when, um, when you say, when someone says God told them something and then, you know, it, it doesn't come to pass. That, that creates a problem, you know, because now it's like, okay, can we trust trust this this man of God or, you know, um, woman of God, whoever, you know, saying or claiming that God told them something. And um, that, that hurts us as a whole, as a body. And that's what I was exactly. saying. Exactly. Um, I mean, that, that guy, the older guy, he'd been on CBN 
Yeah. Uh, I was at Christian oh, wow. Broad- yeah, Broadcast Christian Network. Network. He's been on it for many, many right. years. I can't believe. Right. What's his name? Pat. Um, Pat Robinson. Pat Ro- mm-hmm. Robinson. Right. And I, I know some of the pastors. Um, they apologize for for their right. um, failed prophecy. For the failed prophecy. Right. Here's the clip of Jeremiah Johnson apologizing. So on January seventh, I published a letter apologizing to the body of Christ for inaccurately prophesying that Donald Trump would win re-election. Yeah, it, uh, it looks bad because in the Old Testament, you don't see any of the Old Testament prophets mm-hmm. going back apologizing for, for any prophet going back apologizing <laughs> for some prophecy that ain't coming true. Because if you read Deuteronomy uh, 18, like you just read, but if you go back, um, I have the the, uh, the passage right here, Deuteronomy okay. 18. If you go back a couple verses before uh, verse 22, you go back to verse 20, it says, But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. Mm, that's a serious business. Yeah, so, yeah, God, God, is, serious yeah, about God is serious about when he, yeah, when someone is speaking in his name saying, mm. I, God told them this, he, he's not yeah. playing. Like, you have to be accurate. Well, if not, it, it, it yes, to be business. Right. But and that's why I'm saying that's why you don't see any prophets going back apologizing because <laughs> they have to be accurate. <laughs> oh man. They would like it was Probably required. Yeah. yeah, they like would be required if it was wrong. But they use this excuse uh-huh. about being conditioned. Mm-hmm. Like things can change. Mm-hmm. Maybe Donald Trump did something God didn't like, mm-hmm. so he didn't so God didn't allow him to become president. With that said, how would we know from a false prophet who finds justification right. in using that same excuse? Right. You know, I don't believe that uh, prophecies are based on a condition because if, if they're going to use, for instance, like a lot of pastors are using uh, the, the scripture where uh, Isaiah and Hezekiah, um, Hezekiah prayed to God and God changed his, his, uh, his original word, his original word to him. Um, but there's no condition laid out uh, in that passage where it says, "If you do this, I'll change. You know, I'll change. Yeah. I'll change your, your, That's your true. death sentence." That's true. Because pretty much he gave him a, death, uh, a time a timetable and said that he was going to die. Hezekiah was going to die. Yeah. That was that was God's uh, word to him, mm-hmm. and it and it was going to be fulfilled. And then it said in Second Kings twenty, it says that uh, God told Isaiah to to go back because he had heard his prayer. And that uh, he had seen his tears, so it was God changed his his thoughts uh, towards Hezekiah. It wasn't based on any condition. Really, God showed mercy towards him because he he exactly. saw his he heard his prayer, and then he said he saw his tears. So God was basically extending mercy to him, and that's why he's changed. I like that. Very similar to uh, Exodus, uh, I believe Exodus thirty two, when Moses went to God and uh, they were uh, worshiping, they built a golden calf and they start the people of Israel start worshiping the calf and God told Moses, "Hey, I'm going to destroy these people because they're they're worshiping a, a, a golden calf or whatever." He's like, "Get down, get, go back down the mountain because I'm about to destroy the people." Mm-hmm. And then it said that Moses pleaded to God, and then God had relented mm-hmm. that he was going to destroy his people, and, and he decided not to destroy the people. But God was going to destroy the people there. But Moses had had pleaded God with God also, mercy, yeah. Yeah. so God showed him mercy again. Yeah. So it was just based on God's mercy that He changes his, He changed what. He, he had originally said to, to Hezekiah. Well said. Um, we'll end shortly. Thank you, Brother Terrell, for being a guest on the show. Bless um, here. Bless I'm appreciative here. that you were able to, to make it. And um, I look forward to seeing you on future um, episodes. Likewise, and likewise. I want to say thank you to my audience for um, viewing. Without you, I wouldn't have a show. But maybe I would, and no views. But uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning in and watching. God bless you. And remember, to uh, walk in love, all right?